start off here with setting the layers up. If you take a look over here, we've got several different layers and we're going to use some of them to make the models. This just helps to separate out the separate parts. I'm going to start off here on the curves layer. Now to make sure this is my active layer, I'm going to double click on it because I want to see that there's a check mark next to it. So typically you'll keep a layer for any curves or lines and just work on that layer. So to finish up the curves, the outside of our coffee mug, these blue lines that are going to be the outside, it's not quite done yet. So what I'm going to do is switch down to the front view, double click on the word front up here, zoom in down on the bottom, and I can see that these are not connected. I have to make sure these are connected before I can actually make a surface out of it. So I'm going to go up here to the curve menu, go down about two thirds to blend curves. And the simplest way to blend them together is just to use what's called an arc blend. And what an arc blend is, is if I say, all right, it says select first curve near end. I'll click here. Now it's asking for the second curve near end. I'll click here. And what it does is it automatically puts in a little arc to blend those two lines. So I'll press enter and now I can see I've got this nice little curve connecting those two up. I'm going to repeat that last command and easiest way to repeat the last command is hit the right mouse button and that repeats the last command. So now it's asking me for the next set of curves. I'll click on this curve right here, this curve right here, press enter and that's connected together. I'm going to do that one more time up at the top here. Right click, select this end, this end, and it blends it together with that. So now you can see I've got this nice continuous line. And when I do a revolve on that, that will make a continuous surface. Before I can do that though, what I've got to do is I've got to select all of these and join them together. So to select all of them, I'm going to click on all of them, but that's not actually selecting all of them. What I need to do is I need to hold the shift key down and then go around in a row, select all of them. Shift just means keep selecting. Until I've selected all of them, I'm gonna let go of the shift key. I'm gonna to go to the edit menu and select join. Okay, didn't seem to really do anything, but here's what it did. It joined that into one continuous curve instead of a bunch of different parts. So that finishes up the curve. So now we have a complete set of parts that we can use to make our mug. I'm gonna exit out of the front viewport. I'm gonna to switch to the perspective viewport. Now you can probably figure out what's next. And the sequence is not important, but uh, I'll start off with the most obvious one. You can probably see from the last exercise, the easiest way to make the handle here is just to use a sweep one rail. So I've got two rounded off rectangles for the cross section. I've got this C shape curve to make the handle. So I'm just gonna go up. Well, actually before I do that, I'm gonna make sure that my handle goes on its own layer. So I'm gonna double click here. This is my active layer. Anything I create will show up on this layer. I'll go to surface, sweep one rail, select the rail, select a cross section, select another cross section. Okay, I'm done selecting cross sections, so I can press enter. Check my seam, make sure the arrows point in the same direction, press enter and select my options. Okay, there is my handle. So it just swept that to rail. Now, of course, if you wanted to vary the thickness of this, you could put more cross sections in there, but we'll be good with this one. To make the mug, I'm going to now switch to the mug layer. So I'll have the mug all on its own layer. So to make the mug, I'm going to do a revolve. Before I do a revolve, 
What I want to do is I want to make sure that I have this endpoint object snap turned on. So there should be a little check mark next to there. I'm going to need that. So to do a revolve, I'm going to go to the surface menu, select revolve. All right, now again, the key thing is to remember, read the instructions, select curves to revolve. All right, this is what I want to revolve because I joined it, it's all one curve. Press enter when done. All right, I'm done. And again, if I to press enter, you can either press the enter key on the keyboard or you can right click the mouse button. That's the same as pressing enter. Now, start of revolve axis. Well, this pink line is my revolve axis. You can see it actually corresponds to the Z axis here. So I am gonna click on the bottom here. That's the start of my axis. And I'm going to click on the top here. That's the end of my axis. And now I can see that my curve is revolving around that axis. Easiest way to just go all the way around the circle is just to go up here. You can see where my mouse is. I'm going to click on full circle. And there is my mug. Last thing I want to do is I want to make a surface for the coffee. Now, this takes a little pre-planning because, of course, what I'd like to do is I'd like to make sure that my mug has something in it. Now, I'm planning ahead and thinking that my mug is not going to be see-through. It's going to be made of some opaque ceramic. Most coffee mugs are. So if that's the case, all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a surface of coffee that I can paint like coffee, and I don't have to actually make an entire filled container. Now, if I were going to make a transparent mug, then I'd have to do something different. I'm going to double click here, go to my coffee layer. Now, problem is here, no matter how I rotate my mug, I can't see both ends of my curve. That makes it a little bit difficult to see where my surface is. So what I'm gonna do is now that I'm on this coffee layer, I'm going to click on the little light bulb here and turn off my mug layer. So I haven't deleted my mug, it's still there, it's just invisible right now. And that just helps with the visibility. And same thing here, I could turn off the handle too. So now all I see are my curves. So I'm gonna do another revolve, surface, revolve, Revolve this, press enter, start point, end point, full circle. Okay, so there's the surface that is meant to be my coffee. And I'm going to go back here. I'm going to turn on my mug layer. I'm going to turn on my handle layer. And there is my mug. There's a couple more things I want to do. And one is where my handle meets my surface, what I'd like to do is to put in what's called a fillet. So I am going to switch to my back to my handle layer because I'd like this to appear on the handle layer. I'm going to go surface, fillet surfaces. Now I have to watch this radius value here. If it's too big, it's going to look weird. If it's too small, it's not going to be seen at all. So sometimes you just kind of have to guess at it. So 1.5, well, let's see what that does. Select first surface to fill it. I'm going to click on this surface. Select second surface. I'm going to click on this surface. Okay. And that creates a fillet. Now that looks awfully big. So what I'm going to do is undo that. Control Z. I'm going to right click to repeat that last command and maybe I'll use half of that. So I'm going to click on radius here and I'll make that half, which is about 0.75. Press enter. Let's try that again here, here. That looks a little better. And let's try on the bottom here, right click, surface, surface, Okay, that looks pretty good. So that makes it look like the handle is attached to the mug 
by what we would call a fillet, a little surface in there that connects the two of them. That's a little bit. Next time you take a look at a coffee mug, you can see that there is an actual fillet. I could make that larger or smaller. Uh, one word of caution with the fillet, sometimes it does completely break the geometry and it's a difficult command to use. So if it's not working for you, you might want to undo that. I'm going to do one last thing here before we go to rendering it. I'm going to go to solid, box, corner, corner to corner and height. And I'm going to drag out a box, and it doesn't matter what layer it's on. I'm going to drag downwards, so I have something for my mug to sit on. And also, I'm going to make a couple of spheres. Okay, so there's one right there. Now, that is sitting kind of stuck in the middle of the box. I'd like to lift that out of the box. So easiest way to do that without having to go up to the move command is to use this little gadget called the gumball. So the gumball is turned on and off down here. So you can see right here, I've got it on. If I click on the word gumball, it turns it off. I'm gonna turn it back on. And if I click on the blue arrow, that lets me drag it straight up. The green arrow and the red arrow, that lets me drag it along the Z y and x axes respectively here's a quick way if i want to make a copy i'm going to hold the alt key down and drag it and that makes a quick copy so i'm going to hold the alt key down one more time drag it over here and that makes another copy and i'm just going to use these spheres for the next part which is rendering but that finishes part one of our coffee mug so in part two, we'll take a look at how to render the coffee mug.